Welcome to the unboxing and demo video of the newest and most advanced product from WeGuard, the Aqua Smart Pump. As the name suggests, this pump is truly smart. With its automatic water level sensing technology, you can simply fit the pump and forget about it. The Aqua Smart comes in two series, self prime and centrifugal pumps. Today, we will discuss the self prime variant specifically designed for domestic purposes. Now let's see what all are there inside the box. It comes with a detailed user manual that has all the information you need to install the pump properly. This is the strainer to be fitted in the inlet or suction. This is the float switch. It's used for sensing the water level. Moving on to the next is dead weight. It is used along with the float switch to detect the water level and to deactivate the motor operation. Also, there is one cable gland commonly termed as PG gland, which is used to fix the float switch with the tank. Finally, we are looking at the marvelous EquaSmart series smart pump with an onboard smart control panel, which makes it a really smart device. The WeGuard EquaSmart pump is packed with many innovative features such as smart digital display, automatic on-off, real-time scheduler, timer, superior protection from the dry run, high or low voltage, overload and locked rotor, device internal log and a bypass switch to run the pump like a normal pump. Now that we have seen the pump and learned of its parts, let us move forward to the installation process. Let's start by placing our pump on a horizontal surface. Ensure the place is properly ventilated so there won't be any issues due to lack of air circulation. The pump needs to be protected from direct sunlight, rain and snow. You may require a cover for this. Before starting, ensure your hands are clean and dry. Always perform all electrical insulation, wiring and connections only with the help of a trained electrician. Now we are ready for the pipe fitting process where we'll connect the suction pipe and delivery pipe to the flange washer opening. The insulation process is so easy that you could just fit it and forget it. Next, we need to install the float switch inside the overhead tank. Please consider this container as an overhead tank. This is the inlet pipe coming from the pump. This is the pipe for the overflow and this hole is for the PG gland where we'll connect the float switch and it should be above the overflow level. This is the tank outlet. Fix the PG gland in this hole. Now we'll install the float switch. It's the float switch that controls the water level in the overhead tank. Take the float switch. Fix the dead weight onto the float cable. Take the float switch cable out through the PG gland. Adjust the float switch cable length inside the tank by considering the required minimum reserve water level. The tank should have at least 25% water as reserve. So the float should be placed just above the 25% level like this. The dead weight should be at 65% of the total height. This is the required water level on the tank. This will be the total height of the water level that will be controlled. Tighten the PG gland to lock the float switch position. Once the float switch is installed, we can now connect the sensor to the pump. Keep your fingers dry when working with electricity. Never use equipment with frayed cords, damaged insulation or broken plugs. You will find two different cables coming out from the pump. One is the power cable and the other is the sensor cable that is used to connect the float switch and the pump. Stickers are provided on the cables for easy identification. The sensor cable has four core wires. The red and black wires are for the float switch in the overhead tank while green and yellow wires are for the float switch in the sump tank. Normally, float switches are coming with three core cables. To know which wires from the float switch are to be connected, we suggest using a multimeter and check for continuity. To do this, set the multimeter to continuity mode. Let the float switch hang down like this. Select any two wires and connect them to the multimeter leads. If the multimeter reading shows zero, it means there is continuity. 
It is these wires that are to be connected to the pump. The third wire can be insulated. Now we are connecting the two identified wires to the pump. In this case, it is the red and black wires. These should be joined together with the red and black wires from the pump. Once these wires are connected, ensure that they are properly insulated. Insulate all unused wires from both the pump and float switch. You can use waterproof tape to provide additional protection. Next, we have the power cable consisting of three wires, red, black and green. As you can see, the power cable is now connected to the pump, with the green wire for earth, red for face and black for neutral. Make sure to check that your wires are insulated properly. Now your pump is ready for operation. Let's proceed with the trial run. Simply switch on the plug and see how the smart pump functions smartly. As you can see, the pump is now starting the function. The water is being pumped to the tank and the float switch is rising accordingly. Once the water reaches the maximum height, the pump will automatically stop its functioning and ensure efficient water management. The dead weight may not be initially set to the optimal level. To get the best performance, simply adjust the dead weight up or down till you reach the desired level. If the dead weight is placed below the optimum position of the total water level, the pump may turn off before the tank is full. To ensure the tank is filled properly, you may have to adjust the position of the dead weight upwards. Take the float switch out from the tank and adjust the position of the dead weight upwards. Tighten the dead weight and put it back into the tank. Now turn on the pump. If the dead weight is fixed above the optimum position, there will be an overflow. If the overflow occurs, adjust the dead weight downwards. Additionally, you can install a float for the sump tank which you can buy separately. Fix the dead weight 1 inch above the float. Place the float switch 10 cm above the foot valve level. Lock the float cable at the top of the sump tank. Now we'll see the panel operations. Now let us understand the various LED indicators in detail. Let's begin with the pump on light. It glows when the pump is on. It blinks when the pump is forcefully stopped. This is the dry run indicator. It blinks when a dry run fault occurs. The pump will automatically turn off when this happens. The schedule light glows when the pump is running as per the set schedule. It blinks when the pump is operating on schedule. Whenever any fault is detected, the fault light blinks. Here are some basic menu functions. To enter the menu, press and hold the menu button till NOR is displayed. The first is normal mode. The pump works automatically based on the overhead and sump tank float levels. It is denoted by NOR. Press up or down button to navigate through each menu item. Press enter button to select the item. Press up or down button to change the setting. Press enter to save the settings. If any changes are made to the settings, done is displayed to confirm the settings are saved. If no button is pressed for 20 seconds, the menu times out. All time settings are in 24 hour format. Do you live in an area where water supply comes only at certain times, say in the morning and evening? This is where the two scheduler modes come in handy. You can use scheduler 1 for the morning shift and scheduler 2 for the evening shift. If water comes only in one shift, you can enable or disable the scheduler modes accordingly. 
Let's say the water from the utility provider comes to your house between 6.30 and 7.30 in the morning. Select the scheduler setting option. It allows you to set schedule 1. The indication will be S on. Next step, we need to set the time and for that you select 6 for hours and press enter. Then set 30 for minutes in the same way and press enter. The next indication will show S off, which will be the time when we need the schedule to end. Set the time, say 7 for hours and press enter. Then set 30 for minutes and press enter. Since we have one more scheduler option, we can decide which one to enable or disable. Now scheduler 1 is ready. Let's have a look at SCH2, Scheduler 2 settings. This can be used for setting pump functions in the evening or any other time. The procedure is exactly as shown before. The real-time clock is preset from the factory itself. You can set the time manually as well. We could set RTC time in 24 hours using up or down buttons and press enter. Likewise, we could set minutes with up or down buttons and press enter to finish. You have the option to customize the beep settings according to your preference. If desired, you can disable the beep sounds during startup and pump on or off events. Please be aware that it is not possible to disable the beep notifications for falls. Press up button and enter to enable. Press down button and enter to disable. You can use the config settings to set the dry run cutoff time. Set dry run trip time with up or down buttons. Trip time can be set from 1 minute to 12 minutes. The default dry run time is 1 minute for the centrifugal model and 3 minutes for the self-prime model. The fill function gives additional protection to the pump by turning it off after a desired run time. It will protect the pump and avoid water wastage in the case of a pipe breakage or float malfunction. Press the fill button. Set the maximum single run time using the up and down buttons. The fill run time can be set from 1 minute to 24 hours. The default fill run time is 2 hours. Now look at the TIMR, Timer Pump Application. The timer mode is an additional way to operate the pump for a desired period of time regardless of the water level. It overrides the normal and scheduled auto modes. When the main supply is on, the pump will run for the set duration. To fill the tank, you need to turn on the power supply to the pump each time. Now look at the log application. It shows the details of the last 5 falls that occurred along with information on voltage and current. Press up button to view each fault. Down button to view voltage and current during the selected fault. Observe the fault indicators. The control panels show faults whenever something occurs. You get real-time indications so that immediate action can be taken. To manually clear faults, switch off the main power supply to the pump for 2 seconds and then turn it back on. The user must do this if the retry count is exhausted. There is an inbuilt battery in the panel. This table shows battery health and other details. You may check the user manual for further details. We hope you are now familiar with the WeGuard AquaSmart. It comes with a warranty of one year with Pan India on site service facilities. Thanks for watching this video. We suggest you check it out at a nearby store or online store. We hope the Vegan EquaSmart will set you free and make your life better.